Hey everyone. Um, recently, actually today more specifically, I had a math test on sinusoidal functions. And if you don't know what sinusoidal functions are, they're essentially um, when, like, equations that when you graph them, they give you a wave. And math to me doesn't really have much of a purpose unless you can apply it to something. So today I'm going to talk to you about waves. So I'm going to cover what is a wave, and most importantly, what the applications of waves are. So I'm going to talk to you about um, different kinds of wavelengths and uh, sort of things you'll you'll see in your everyday life that evolve around uh, waves, but also the more um, cadet style approach to it. So what waves we use for essentially radios on Bush weekend, um, aviation radios, and even radios in our cars. So first of all, let's define what a wave is. So a wave. A wave is essentially just a disturbance. It's a disturbance created by something. It could be you chuck a rock into a lake and it causes the, uh, the motion of water, which creates a wave. Now, waves uh, usually have a medium. But the waves I'm talking to you today about actually don't have mediums. And a medium, uh, I should define what that is, is essentially something that the wave flows through. So in my previous example about chucking a rock into water, what's the medium? Right, water. Uh, that's what the wave moves through. But what about light? Light's a wave. Does it move through anything? No, right? Because it, it comes from the sun, uh, most of our light. And uh, yeah, space is pretty much nothing, so it doesn't need uh, a medium to move through. And what we call waves that don't need mediums to move through is actually called electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and I don't want to get into the too much physics behind this. Um, you can learn that in your uh, high school science classes, but I just want to talk to you quickly about what parts of a, like define the parts of a wave and also of course their applications. So if we look into our diagram here, let me just change the color quickly. Do, 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 actually no, one second. Technical difficulties. Okay, so if we look at the diagram here quickly, we can see that we have a wave in red here. We also have uh, um, gray arrows here and this thing. And first of all, let's define what I mean by this yellow bracket. And this is actually called the period, period. The period of a wave is essentially the time it takes to get from one place on a wave, let's say here, to another place on the wave that's exactly the same. So if we look here, if we look at this part of the wave here when it starts, well, what's the next part of the wave that looks exactly like that? Over here. So the period of the wave is essentially one cycle. And there's a specific unit of measurement that we use to measure how many cycles there are per second of a wave. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. It's called Hertz. Hertz. And it's often abbreviated H, Z. So that's what a period is, the amount of cycles per second of a wave, and it's measured in Hertz. We also have amplitude, and that's the distance between the resting axis and the crest, that's the crest, the top of the wave, or the trough of the wave. So amplitude's the distance between the, the resting axis and the crest or the trough of the wave, and we call that amplitude. 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 Cool. So. That's essentially um, saying how much power the wave has. The, the greater the amplitude, the more uh, power it has, generally the longer range it will travel. Amplitude. Uh, also, we have wavelength. So that's actually the distance, the distance, similar to the period between two equal parts of the wave, and we call that wavelength. So those are some of the key terms you need to know um, about waves. But now let's talk about something called the electromagnetic spectrum. So if we were to draw a wave, let's just draw a wave here. We're going to draw it with a relatively large period. But over time, 
that period. Oh, I'm trying to draw it here. It's kind of hard. Get smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you can't make the distinction between the period anymore. So obviously here at this end, the frequency in Hertz is going to be lower. So a low frequency at this end and a high frequency at this end. So what we do, uh, we, we're going to call this um, funny looking wave here, the electromagnetic mag, whoops, magnetic spectrum. And this is essentially, if you Google uh, Google images, electromagnetic spectrum, you'll probably see something very similar to this. Uh, at the low end here, and remember when we talk about electromagnetic spectrum, first of all, we're talking about waves that travel without a medium. So the lowest kind of waves, or the lowest frequency kind of waves in our electromagnetic spectrum are called, let's just divide it up here. So let's say these are our low frequency waves, and these are called radio waves. All right, so radio waves, that's, that's pretty general, right? There's a lot of different kind of radios, and there's a lot of different kind of radio waves as well. So one thing that I'm sure you've all heard of, and if you haven't heard of it, well, uh-oh, but I'm sure you've all heard of um, radios in your car and like listening to the radio station um, when you're in the car, when you're sitting down at home, and you might tune to 89.9 .9 megahertz. 89.9 .9 megahertz. What does that mean? Well, that's essentially saying that the frequency of this wave is 89.9 .9 million hertz. Mega means million, so 10 to the power of 6 hertz. So we might say that the common listening radio frequencies are down here. And when you change the radio station, what you're actually doing is you're changing what kind of uh, frequency of wave your, uh, your, uh, your radio looks for. So when you change, tune it to 89.9 megahertz, your radio is looking for waves that have a frequency of 89.9 megahertz. You want to listen to another radio station, say 93.9. Now you're listening to um, radio waves that have a slightly higher frequency, therefore distinguishing it from the 89.9 megahertz band. So those are commoning like, um, music uh, radio frequencies, radio stations, and that's what they're used for. Before I go on anymore, I want to say that low frequency waves are generally, uh, char um, they have different characteristics than high frequency waves. So low frequency waves generally have um, um, long range. Sorry, that's a N. Long range. And they're also very good at going around obstacles. So when you're driving your car, you kind of want, first of all, you want your, your radio stations that you listen to in your car and whatnot to have whoops didn't mean to do that to have a to have good good range because you don't want to always be flipping through different channels when um, your radio stations go out of range and you also want them to be able to go around obstacles because it wouldn't be really inconvenient if you're driving in the city and you pass by a building and then all of a sudden your your radio station cuts out and you you know you're rocking out to your favorite song and whatever and now there's no more music and that would really suck so anyhow. It's really good that low frequency waves go through obstacles. That's, that's a characteristic of low frequency waves. High frequency waves, on the other hand, generally have better clarity. So the, the actual signal, the amount of data that's, that's carried in the wave is carried over more in high frequency waves. You get a better quality of, of signal in high frequencies, although the compromise is you have shorter range. And um, they generally, high frequency waves are 
line of sight waves. So the um, high frequency waves work best when the transmitter and the receiver of the wave are in direct contact. There's nothing that the wave has to go through. So anyhow, I'm going to continue on with the kind of waves we see in our electromagnetic spectrum. So we talked about um, radio stations that we listen to in your car and whatnot. Now let's move a little bit up. Those stations generally end at about 107, 108 megahertz. Well, what starts after that? You got it. Aviation frequencies. So aviation frequencies are slightly higher frequency waves. They're generally between, I don't know, I'd say 115 megahertz and what? Sorry, I, if the numbers are wrong here, but maybe let's say just for argument's sake, 140 megahertz. So we've gone up in uh, radio frequency, and we have a we have a generally a shorter range now, but we're going to have a better clarity of signal, right? Because we've gone up in frequency, and that's the general rule. When we go up in frequency, we get a better clarity of signal, but we get a shorter range. Now it's a good thing to point out here that some of these frequencies are they have different restrictions on them. So in this, this band of radio waves can only be used for aviation. This band around here can only be used for radio stations. And not all these um, kinds of frequencies are available to the public. If we actually go lower down than 89.9 megahertz down to let's say 50 megahertz, sorry, I don't have enough room on the diagram, but you know what's at 50 megahertz? walkie talkies so it's really important to point out here that the 50 megahertz band is really really open because you have you know you can go to any store and buy a walkie talkie and broadcast and receive openly on this band there's nothing uh, preventing you from broadcasting on this band and it, I just want to point out that these frequencies are very highly regulated on what you can do with them and what you can't do with them and that's specifically in the radio waves section. So now let's get a little bit higher than radio waves. Let's go over here. So what's past our aviation frequencies? Well, I'm going to stop measuring all the, um, the waves at this point in megahertz and units like that because these waves get to such, such a high frequency that there's no more prefix to uh, define them. I have a Wikipedia page open here and it tells me yada the prefix, there's a prefix called yada for a septillion. One septillion. How often do you hear that? Pretty much never. Anyhow, so what we're going to get into now is infrared. Infrared waves. Infrared waves, a common application of infrared waves are actually your TV remote. If you take a TV remote, and uh, you want to turn on your TV, actually what's happening by your TV remote is it's sending an infrared signal out that little glass prism on the front of your remote or plastic or whatever, and then you have a receiver on, the, on your cable box, on your TV, whatever, that can find the infrared wave, pick it up, and uh, yeah, use it to turn on your TV. So that's, that's infrared waves. And if we go higher than infrared waves, we get to a section of the electromagnetic spectrum that's very important to us. I'm sure you know why, because this is called visible light. Visible light. And visible light is actually what you see. You see things because light reaches your eyes, right? Infrared waves are slightly beyond what we can see with our eyes, but then once we get into visible light, we can actually see um, there's an acronym called Roy G. Biv. So that's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And those are the colors that you see from the um, lowest frequency to the highest frequency of wavelength. So your eyes can actually define different frequencies and your brain interprets them as different colors. And that's super cool, right? So yeah, Roy G. Biv is the acronym to remember visible light. And then after visible light, you get it to ultraviolet light ultraviolet and ultraviolet light is emitted by the sun and there are um, particles and whatnot in our atmosphere that prevent too much ultraviolet light from uh, 
from hitting us. But ultraviolet light can uh, damage our skin and whatnot, and that's not not good. And then higher than that, we get to gamma rays and X rays and ultraviolet light, uh, which I which I mentioned here. And anyhow, that's way way uh, way way up the electromagnetic spectrum. But essentially, the point of this video was to make you understand what a wave is, and more importantly, the applications of waves. So next time you tune your car radio to 89.9 megahertz, or you go into an aircraft um, and you see that the radio is set at 123.2 megahertz, you now know what those frequencies are, and hopefully have a little bit of understanding of, you know, what what characteristics are associated with which frequencies, and uh, um, a general understanding of, uh, of waves in a sense. So thank you for watching this video and uh, please send me requests if you want specific videos uh, made because I can do pretty much anything. And uh, yeah, have a good day.